the challenge of the Yukon. King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. <laughs> Sergeant Preston, on patrol duty in the Yukon, made many friends who were always glad to see him. One of these was Ab Crowley, who lived with his wife in a small cabin several miles north of Three Forks. A vicious storm had swept wind and snow in the face of the Mountie as he drove his team toward the small settlement, and the prospect of a warm cup of tea with the Crowleys was something he looked forward to. The great dog King ran ahead of the sled, cutting tracks in the snow. I'm King, on you huskies. Not much further, King. Ah, there's the cabin. It's good to see that light. Oh, King, oh, you huskies. Hey there, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Am. How are you? Yeah, fine. I'm mighty glad to see you. Come on in and have a cup of tea. This is just me, Sam. Well, I've been looking forward to having a cup of tea with you ever since I left Broken Wishbone, Ab. How's Mrs. Crowley? Oh, fine, just fine. Uh, we got some good news for you, Sergeant. Yes? Well, what is it, Ab? Uh, it'll wait for a few minutes. You go on inside. I'll take care of the dogs. You too, King. Go on in there. <laughs> All right, King. <laughs> Thanks, Ab. Land sake, Sergeant Preston. Sure is good to see you. Come on in here and close that door. Well, how are you, Miss Crowley? Never been better in my life, Sergeant. Did Ab tell you the news? Oh, no, he didn't. He said it could wait till he got inside. Say, what's this all about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I expect the better to let Ab tell you. He's been hankering to tell you ever since we... Uh-oh. There, I almost told you myself. <laughs> well, I'm certainly curious. Uh, tell me this much. You both look so pleased. It must be something awfully good, huh? It is, Sergeant. It's the best thing that's happened to us ever since we came to this snowbound place. There, there you are. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, this tea certainly tastes good. Warms you up after all that cold. I guess Ab will be wanting a cup too when he comes in. Uh, hey, did you tell the sergeant yet, Ada? <laughs> oh, no, she hasn't told me yet, Ab. Well, I reckon I'll tell you myself, then. <laughs> As if you didn't want the pleasure of telling him yourself all along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, me and Ada just bought the last chance claim. Last chance? Yep. That was Jeb Fisher's claim, wasn't it? It was. Now it's ours. Well? Well. The sake's alive, Sergeant. The, the cat gets your tongue. Can't you say any more than that? I declare, Ab, I knew it'd be surprised, but I never thought Just uh, how much do you know about the last chance, Ab? Well, it's a good claim. I saw Jeb turn up some of the dust myself. I think it's a good piece of luck. We, uh... Had kind of hard time eating Jeb's price, but... Uh, we just took what we'd been saving, and Jeb turned it over to us for the cash. How much cash? Yeah, uh, $12,000. All the money we had. Why, what's wrong, Sergeant? Well, Ab, I won't congratulate you on your good luck till we make sure it is good luck. Well, what do you mean, Sergeant? I don't trust Jeb Fisher, Mrs. Crowley. I'm afraid that claim is worthless. But we'll soon find out. Witless. Of course, I have no proof. Sergeant, I can't say that I've ever known you to be wrong before. But this is once I think you've made a mistake. Why, I saw that dust myself. You're no Chichaco, Ab. You know as well as I do that Fisher could have sold it, that claim. He could have, Ab. But heaven help us if the sergeant's right. Heaven helps him that helps himself, Zeta Gal. I'm going to start in tomorrow working on that ground. You will know how we stand. Well, that's a good idea, Ab. I'll tell you what I'll do. 
I have some friends at Three Forks who will be glad to lend a hand. Well, I don't like to be any trouble to you. Oh, no trouble at all, Ed. I was headed for Three Forks anyway, so I'll stop to see them. Well, we'll be looking for you, Sergeant. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. All right, King. Get the dogs up. I'm King on you Huskies! Sergeant Preston entered the Moosehead Cafe in Three Forks a short time later. As he moved through the room, he heard a boisterous laugh. <laughs> so I have $12,000 in my pocket, and Crowley's got the deed to the last chance. You cleaned up on that deal. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. <laughs> Poor old Crowley stuck for plenty. It's his own fault. I don't know, Jim. What do you mean? Seems to me it's a pretty yellow trick to pull on a couple as old as the Crowleys. Well, they wanted the last chance, didn't they? I sold it to them. $12,000 must have been all the money they got in this world. Yeah, that don't mean nothing to me. Don't you feel at all sorry for folks like them? No, why should I? It was a business deal, that's all. I buy and sell property. Ain't none of my business how people get the money to pay for it, uh, as long as it's cash on the line. <laughs> You're loco, Sam. Well, I guess I just don't see things the way you do. Now listen and take it from me. You'll never get far in the Yukon if you go around feeling sorry for every guy that gets stuck. You're Jeb Fisher, aren't you? Why, yeah. What do you want with me, Monty? I understand Abner Crawley just bought your last chance claim. Yep. Fisher, you know there's no gold on that land. I don't know nothing about that land. I sold him the property. We turned up gold on it. You've sold it claims before. Crowley bought that claim, and I didn't guarantee nothing in right. Whether you guarantee it or not, Crowley believes there's gold on that property. <laughs> then let him dig for it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe he'll find it. <laughs> you oughtn't to talk to him like that, Jeb. <laughs> Why not? The oh, law ain't got nothing on me. The next day, at the last chance claim, not far from Abner Crowley's cabin, six men helped the old miner work his newly acquired land. Yeah. What's the matter, Ab? Ain't getting tired, are you? Uh, me? No. Well, what's wrong? You know, Rob, Sergeant Preston told me this land was probably worthless. I'm afraid he's right. <coughs> well, now, uh, Ab, I, I wouldn't be too ready to give up. Me and the boys will stay around as long as you need us. Well, I don't like to Now, this don't you worry, Ab. Mrs. Crowley fixes better chow we've had in a year Sundays at Three Forks. Well, I believe that's a sergeant coming now. Looks like it is. Hey there, sergeant. Oh, King. How are you, Huskies? Hello, sergeant. Well, Rob, Hello. see you've kept your word. Ab, yeah, we've been pretty busy, all right. How's it going, Ab? Well, Sergeant, I, I think maybe you was right. Why, Ab? Poor Eddie. I'll have to tell you we paid our twelve thousand dollars for a worthless piece of earth. All right. <clears throat> uh, I told him, Sergeant, not to be so willing to give up. I'm not surprised, Ab. No, you told me, but I wouldn't leave you. Well, there's nothing for us to do now. I'm not so sure about that. Rob and I talked it over yesterday. And here's our plan. A rumor of gold in the Yukon always spread like wildfire. A word dropped in a conversation, sudden activity in a place that had formerly been deserted, and an old miner in town spending money freely. Any one of these things were enough to start men talking, telling exaggerated stories of a new gold discovery. So when old Abner Crowley, long known for the quiet and thrifty way he lived, went into Three Forks carrying a poke of gold dust, the word spread that the last chance claim held fabulous amounts of the precious dust. Did you hear the news, Jeb? What news? About the last chance paying out. Yeah, I heard it. But I thought you said... No matter what I said. Did you know it? Oh, shut up, Sam. Oh, I begin to see. Shut up, I tell you. <laughs> and you thought you took old Abner. I didn't know the last chance was a strike. You're darn tootin' you didn't know it. 
It'd have never gotten out of your hands if you had thought that. Uh, I'd give anything to get that claim back. Uh, what a fool I was. All right, boys, have another drink. It's all on me. <laughs> <laughs> you too, Rob. Have what you want. Thanks, Ab. Don't mind if I do. Ever since you struck it at the last chance... That's of... right. The sky's the limit. Hello there, Ab. Why, Jeb Fisher. The man that sold me the last chance, my best friend. We always thought you was a good businessman, Jeb. What happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know how it is. <laughs> uh, Ab, I'd like to talk to you. Hey, what do you want to talk about, Jeb? Ain't got much time, you know. Got to get back to the last chance. Me and Ed. Yeah, 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 I know. <clears throat> but I'd like to talk to you. Hey, well, all right. Come on, Rob. Yeah, sure. Where do you want to talk, Jim? Uh, let's go in the back room where we won't be disturbed. Uh, suit you, Rob. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, there now. <clears throat> Nobody will bother us in here. Uh, have a chair, boy. Yeah. Sure, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, what's on your mind, Jim? <clears throat> Ab, uh, Ab, when I sold you the last chance, I told you I was planning to leave the Yukon. Yep, that's right, you did, Jeb. Well, a uh, few things have happened since then, and I've changed my mind. I'm staying here, and I'd like to have the last chance back. You see, when I sold it to you, I thought I was leaving, and I wanted to get my affairs straightened up. Yeah, Jeb, a deal's a deal. I bought the last chance. I know how you feel. You paid me $12,000 for the last chance. Yep. Cash you dead. Uh, I'll uh, pay you fifteen thousand to get it back. Nope. Not interested. Sixteen thousand. Now listen, Jeb. If you was in my place, would you sell her? I'll make it eighteen thousand dollars, Ab. <clears throat> nope. I don't want to. It costs plenty to work a mine, you know, Ab. I'll give you twenty thousand in cash for that claim. Pretty anxious to get it back, ain't you, Jeb? Hello, Ab. Hello, Sergeant. Hey, Fisher, what are you doing here? Uh, trying to make a deal with Ab here, Monty. What sort of a deal, Ab? Now, you keep out of this, Monty. Jeb wants to buy back the last chance claim, Sergeant. Well... I'll pay him cash for it. Jeb, I think I'll take you up on that. He did me uh, getting old. I ought to clear out of the Yukon and let the younger man work the last chance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Glad you feel that way about it, Ab. <laughs> I'll be right back with the money. The money here will witness the sale. <laughs> what to tell you, Am? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hope it don't take too long getting that money. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sam will have the money here in a minute, Ab. <laughs> yes, sir, I think you're being right smart about it. I hope so, Jeb. I certainly wish you the same kind of luck I had with the last chance. Yeah. Hey, here, Jeb. Oh, uh, well, <laughs> here you are, Ab. It's all there. Count it if you want. <clears throat> uh, you better count it, Ab. Yeah, yeah. Yep, all here. Well, Jeb, last chance is yours again. Here's the deed. Now, Rob, here's that $5,000 to pay back the boys for the gold they lent me and for working at the claim. The gold they lent you? Sure. I figured to look like a man that struck it rich. I ought to have some gold, so they got together and lent it to me. Look like a man that... Say, what is this? You mean you didn't get that gold from the last chance? We ain't found any gold in it yet, Jeb. Why, you said... I didn't say nothing, Jeb. You came to me wanting to buy back the last chance, and I sold it to you. I've been swindled. You led me to believe you found gold there. If what you told me when you sold it was true, the gold's still there. I tell you, we ain't touched any of it. Why, you out? I wouldn't do that if I were you, Jeb. That was a fair sale. I saw it myself. Looks like you're stuck with your own bargain, Jeb. There's not a thing you can do about it. <laughs> All right, boys, come on outside. This time, I'll treat you the best in the house, and I'll pay for it with my money. <laughs> well, looks like Abner Crowley came out all right after all. <laughs> yes, King, the case is closed. Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. Bill Morgan speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.